Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and thank you for watching today. Um, today, I want to go over a new product that I've been uh, testing, and it's called Open Media Vault. Uh, Open Media Vault is an application that uh, I'm I'm getting into. I really like it. Um, it is a, a, a network attached storage solution. And the best part about it is it's based on Debian Linux. Uh, first one I've seen like this. I showcased um, another product uh, not too long ago, Nextcloud, uh, that is also Debian based. Uh, but this one is called Open Media Vault. And uh, I've set it up uh, in a virtual machine to give it a test run. And I'm, I'm impressed with it. Um, Let's, we're on the website now. Let me take a look in, uh, at the website itself. It says here on uh, www.openmediavault.org. I'll put a link to this and the download as well for the ISO um, on the video so that you have it. But it says, what is Open Media Vault? It's a next-generation uh, network-attached storage solution based on Debian Linux. It contains services like SSH. FTP, SFTP, uh, SMB, CIFS, DAAP, Media Server, RSync, BitTorrent Client, and many more. Now, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with SSH. That's the secure shell in Linux. Uh, FTP, of course, everybody knows about that, uh, the file transfer protocol server. The SFTP, which is the secure file transfer protocol server uh, or an application. Uh, basically, it's uh, FTP over SSH. Uh, the SMB CIFS, if you're not familiar with that, that's the simple message block uh, common internet file system. It's the file system uh, and communication protocol com combination that is used um, to for network uh, communication for things like open vault um, media, open media vault rather. Uh, for uh, NAS storage. And so network attached storage using uh, Debian Linux caught my eye. Um, I've uh, set it up and I'm going to show you the entire process from setup to completion. Um, and uh, I think you'll like it. So let's get into it. This is Open Media Vault, uh, the open network attached storage solution. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm out on my uh, Oracle VirtualBox Manager 6.0 uh, platform, and I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, the Open Media Vault application that I introduced you to earlier. And um, I downloaded the latest version of Open Media Vault for Debian Linux 64-bit, uh, uh, and I put it on my F drive, which is my uh, in the ISOs folder, which is where I was, uh, store all my ISOs that I use for virtual machines. And so let's go ahead and set this thing up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on Machine and New. And then I'm just going to call this uh, Open Media Vault. Okay? And it's based on Debian Linux, as I said. So I'm going to select Linux as the type. The version I'm going to select as Debian 64-bit. I'm only going to give this thing 2048 or uh, megabytes or two gigs of RAM. That's all it really needs. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and create it. And then uh, I'm going to give it about 20 gigs of uh, space here, uh, dynamically allocated. That's really all we'll need for this. And uh, so let's, it's a VDI, virtual uh, box disk image. I'm going to go ahead and click Create and create that particular image. All right, so let's go up to Settings. And then here in Settings, uh, under System, I'm going to untick the floppy, select the hard disk, and move it up in the boot order so we have hard disk ahead of optical. So when I restart this uh, uh, Debian application, uh, it'll come up to the hard drive after we've installed it instead of coming back to the installer. All right, so um, let's go down to Display. I'm not going to move this up. Let's leave it at 16 megs. This is a platform that does not have a user interface uh, in Debian. Uh, we'll go out on the web, since it is a web application, and we'll do that there. So we don't really need that uh, tweaked anymore. OK, so one monitor. Let's go with VM, VGA, v VBox, rather, VGA monitor.
for storage, let me click on that and click under the IDE controller, click the optical media here, drive, and choose from the optical drive. Go out to my uh, ISOs folder here on Last Fall 2. Let's select that Open Media Vault 4.1.22 AMD 64 ISO that I downloaded from the web. It's not very big. And let's click Open. Okay, so we've got it uh, inserted there in the CD-ROM. Uh, let's come down. We don't need audio. Uh, I'm not going to touch it, though. Uh, you know, I'm not going to disable it, just not going to use it. Um, for network, let's go ahead and select for adapter 1, uh, enable the network adapter, and attach that to a bridged adapter uh, setup using my Realtek uh, family controller. All right, and then for USB, I do want to select USB 3.0, and the reason for that is I do have a one terabyte a USB 3 supported device that I'm going to be using as the actual network attached storage uh, that I'm testing here today and that I'm showing you how to set up. So let's select USB 3.0. Let's go ahead and click OK. And so it's ready to go. Uh, it's uh, opened Media Vault. And so let's go up here to the start and click Start. And when it comes up, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is uh, Click the view to full screen mode. So we got a black background there. And here it is, Open Media Vault. We can install, install serial, console, or advanced. I'm going to go ahead and do install. All right. Okay, so here we are. Uh, it says to choose the language to be used in the installation process. It's setting on English. I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key. Um, select the location here. And the selected location that it found for me, which is good, is the United States. So I'm going to hit enter. Uh, the key map to use is the American English key map for the keyboard. That's good. Hit enter and let, its, uh, let it get into its thing here. Um, doesn't take very long to install this application, by the way. Um, it's, as I said, running on Debian Linux, which is uh, very lightweight to begin with. Um, and so the installation should go fairly rapidly. It's doing a lot of things here, uh, retrieving a bunch of stuff. And... We should come up to a couple of more questions here soon. Detecting the link for link local address. It found it. It's attempting IPv6 auto configuration. I'm going to leave IPv6 installed. Uh, now it's configuring the network with DHCP. All right, so it's asking me now for the host name. Uh, I'm going to leave the host name as Open Media Vault and go ahead and hit the tab over and continue. Hit the enter key. Now it's asking me for a domain name, and I'm going to tell it that the domain is lanlocal.asyscom.com. All right, this is my LAN uh, fully qualified domain name set up in my router. You can have it do make you can make that example.com if you want to. It doesn't really matter, and for this particular demonstration, it doesn't really matter either. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. All right, it's asking me for a root password. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Continue, and it's asking me to re-enter it. Let me go ahead and do that again. Okay, and if they match, it did. Uh, select your time zone. It uh, picked Eastern, which is correct for me, Eastern United States. All right, and it's partitioning now the uh, the drive itself, the 20 gig drive, VDI. It's installing the system, so it's going to be copying data to the disk. And uh, this will not take very long, actually. Uh, I was really impressed at how short a time frame it took to actually do the install here. And if I don't have any network issues today, um, it should go just as well as when I ran it earlier. Um, Open Media Vault is, uh, as I said, is a great uh, network attached storage solution. Uh, it's basically designed uh, for uh, small business, home office, and uh, office use, uh, home use rather. Um, but it, that doesn't uh, mean that it's limited to that. I mean, you can use this in an enterprise uh, for network attached storage as well. But it is it is uh, predominantly used in a small home office. Uh, Soho, it's called, small office, home office, uh, or uh, small business. 
or strictly home use. And I'm going to be using this as a virtual machine, uh, setting up, as I said, a one terabyte uh, NASA device, uh, NAS device, um, which is used to be uh, a click-free device, and now I've uh, modified it to be a NAS solution. It is a one terabyte hard drive uh, in an enclosure, and uh, works fairly well, uh, connected to USB. All right, so we're at 95% right now, and uh, it's installing uh, the E2FS libraries for AMD64. And in a few moments, it'll ask me where do I want to put the grub for installation, and we do want to do that on dev SDA1. All right, so uh, Debian uh, Archive Mirror Country is uh, United States. Hit enter. And I'm going to use the ftp.us.debian.org. And do we have a proxy? No. So I'm going to go ahead and enter and let it do its thing here. So it's retrieving 30 files um, and uh, configuring the uh, aptitude package manager. Now, this is running Debian, so you can update your Debian system just like any other Debian system, which is really nice. Uh, for network attached storage. You can use an SSD drive. You can use a regular USB uh, stick. You can use uh, even a two and a half inch uh, connected to a uh, adapter for USB and, and run your network attached storage that way as well. Like I said, I'm using a one terabyte uh, connected to USB uh, for mine and it seemed to work just fine. Uh, since I am doing this in a virtual machine though, I did have to uh, work with the USB, and I'll show you that in a moment. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to install the bootloader here on Dev SDA. And so it's, uh, it's disabling the net inst CD. That's how it uh, installed. Um, this is not your typical installation media here. This is a NetInst uh, installation media with CD um, from the web. I'm not using a uh, CD or a DVD or anything like that in my local machine. Okay, it says its uh, installation is complete. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. It's going to go ahead and boot up. And then we'll get into uh, Open Media Vault. Take a look at it. That's how quick it was. Very easy to install. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. And we'll talk more about it. All right, so we're up in uh, to the uh, login here, and uh, the boot up, rather, screen. And so I hit that, and so eventually it should uh, go through its uh, boot up process and get to a screen that we can log in if we want. Okay, so it says uh, here that uh, it's looking at ENP0S3, um, which is port 0, slot 3 uh, for the uh, Ethernet connectivity, which means it's wired because that's what my uh, Windows 10 machine is what I've got the uh, virtual machine uh, 6.0 platform set up in. You'll notice that there is an IP address there. It says 192.168.1.12, and since I did a bridge connection it's on my LAN. That is the IP address of the uh, uh, the web interface that we'll need, need to get into. I'm going to go ahead and log in as root here, though. Uh, so I'm going to do root and put in the password. Okay, so we're logged in, and I'm going to just do a listing here. We're at the uh, let's do a PWD and take it. We're at root home directory. And um, let's get into here, and let's take a look at that. So this is your the stratification here of your uh, Debian Linux directories, uh, and those are typical. You've got a few uh, uh, soft links as well for initrd image and uh, VM Linux. All right, and but uh, other than that, you've got your home directory, your dev, boot, bin. Uh, at, the Etsy directory, mount, media, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a typical Debian install. All right. 
So let me get back to uh, the root directory again where we left off. And uh, so I'll put it back in there. And, um, and then we'll get out on the web and take a look at it. Okay, so I'm back out on my web browser now um, at www.openmediavault.org. And we're going to log in to the web administration interface here for Open Media Vault. And if you recall from uh, the previous, uh, when we logged in, um, the IP address was 192.168.1.12. So I'm going to click the uh, plus for to get a new tab here. I'm going to put in uh, 192.168.1.12 and hit enter. And brings us up to this login screen. So we're actually interfacing now with Open uh, Media Vault. And by default, uh, and we'll change this as soon as we get in, but by default, the username is admin and the password is all lowercase and it's Open Media Vault. Okay, so let's click login. And so we are logging in now. And I do not want to save that, I'll say never. And so this, this is it. This is Open Media Vault. We're in the web interface. Um, there's a lot here, guys, I have to tell you, for uh, a program that's installed uh, in Debian Linux. This is really wonderful. You've got a bunch of things here. We'll get into that. Let's go up to General Settings, however, and go over to Web Administrator, Administrator Password. Here's where you change the password. Now, one of the things that you'll learn about Open Media Vault is every time you make changes and click that Save button, you'll need to wait for a yellow banner to come up at the top and click Apply uh, to save changes. And so let me go ahead and change the password here. Let's change it to another password. Okay, then confirm it. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and then wait for that yellow banner to come up that you'll see. And you have to be patient with Open Media Vault, just like any other application. Um, actually, this is one you don't have to do the, uh, I'm sorry. I click Save, and there is no yellow banner for this particular web interface password change. I'm not sure why. It's the only one I've encountered. And I forgot about it, but we should have the new password. So let me go ahead and log out. So I'm going to come over here and log out and say yes. And let's try it. I'm going to do admin and the new password. Okay, put that in and click login. All right, so that password did change. Very good. You'll want to do that uh, if you're installing this uh, Open Media Vault NAS solution especially if you're using, uh, you know, externally attached storage device um, to your system here and you've got uh, Open Media Vault installed on bare metal. They will try to get into it. So, all right, so here the host name is openmediavault.landlocal.asyscom.com. It is version 4.1.22.1 or dash one. Um, it's giving my processor kernel system time here uptime of only 13 minutes 19 seconds now down below this we've got uh, and we've got more here we've got uh, uptime load average uh, CPU usage and memory uh, here for services we've got these are the services that are enabled that are in green and the ones that are running here the only thing that's up and running right now and enabled is SSH we will enable SMB CIFS and probably FTP along the way in today's demonstration, but right now it's just SSH. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to the general settings and I want to change the auto logout time away from five minutes and let's change that for now to 30 minutes. Uh, what happens here on this auto logout is this is the amount of time if you're idle uh, that the, will log you out of the system uh, to protect the system, okay? Five minutes is too short for this demo, so I'm going to change that to 80. The port we're using here is port 80, by the way. Let me go ahead and click the Save button. Now, we should get the yellow banner here for this. There it is. Okay, so when you see that, click Apply and click Yes, and that means it has now taken. All right, so we have a 30-minute auto logout. First thing I'm going to do here is I want to go back out to... Um, 
my VirtualBox 6.0 manager, and I want to uh, go take and let's, um, in order to change this, I'm going to have to stop this. And so let me go out, let me go back over rather, and I'm going to have to stop this process and um, make a change to the settings. All right, so let me, I'm logged in as root right now, so let me do a power off. To power off the Debian system, okay? And so let's, uh, that should say powered off, it does. And so let's go up to settings here and go down to USB. And here I need to apply a filter to my USB 3.0. And so here I'm going to add a new filter and I'm going to click the uh, SAC, SAC, click free, all right? And click OK. I need to do that because this is a demonstration where I've got the USB 3.0 device connected and it's a virtual machine, so I need to make that change. Otherwise, it won't see it. All right. So let me go ahead and restart the virtual machine. Now, normally, you would not be running this in a virtual machine, although you could if you wanted to. Um, you could do that um, and do it very well, actually. Uh, but um, you normally would do this on bare metal, and you wouldn't have to do what I just did. All right, so the IP address should not change. And so let's go back here uh, to the web. And uh, right now it's saying that it's logged out. Okay, so now it's logging me back out again. So let me do an admin and the password. All right, so we're logging back in now with the password. And... First thing I need to do now that I've got everything set up is I need to go down to um, storage and let's look at the disks that we have. And we do have the SDA, Dev SDA, which is the VirtualBox 20 gig uh, VDI drive that I've got uh, Open Media Vault installed on. And now we also have the attached storage, which is Dev SDB. It's just the SAC click free, and it is 931.32 gigabytes. For all intents and purposes, it's one terabyte. All right. And so let's come down to file systems and let's click that. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to take a look at the file system associated with the click free, which is the NTFS file system. You'll note that here on the dev SDA1, which is the 20 gig drive, it is mounted. However, the NAS device is not mounted. So what we need to do is we need to select that device and we need to um, come over here and we need to mount it. And we can do that directly from the web interface. All right, and so let's click apply and yes. And now it should say that the uh, after it changes the uh, configuration that the 931.15 gigabyte available drive is mounted. All right, so it is now mounted ready to use. So let's come down to services and come down to SMB CIFS. Let's select that and we're going to need to enable the uh, simple message block uh, common internet file system. So let's do enable here and let's save that. All right, now that we've saved it, let's click apply and yes here. And I want to create a share on that um, uh, NAS attached storage here. So let's click on Shares. Let's click Add. And it is enabled. So the shared folder, I'm going to click the down arrow. And um, oh, I forgot something here. Sorry, guys. Let me go back. And we need to come down to Services. And... Um, or not services. Uh, one moment. Let me just figure this out here. Um, forgot something somewhere. Okay, here we go. Under shared folders, let's click add, and I want to create a share. I want to call this public. And the device I want to select here is the NAS 170.61 uh, megabyte used, 931.1. That's the one terabyte drive. I want to call, make this a public share. 
And the permissions I want to use here is I want to make this a everyone read write. I want to make this a guest public uh, share. So let's click save here. All right. And now that we've got that set up, after we do the apply and yes. All right. We need to come back to the SMB CIFS and to the shares location. We need to add that particular share now. All right, there it is, public on NAS. Okay, don't need to put a comment. Is it public? Yes, it is public, and it is only guests. Okay, read only no, browsable yes, and let's click save. And we should get a yellow banner again, apply, and yes. All right, and so now we have effectively set up our public share on our network attached storage. And let's go ahead and, and show that this has actually happened. Let me go out on my um, uh, Windows machine here, and let me go to this PC. All right. And uh, on this PC, um, we should have the public here, okay? Public share on Open Vault Z, um, but actually, let me do this. Let me go and get on to the platform itself here, and let's go to this PC and shortcut, and let's do a map network drive, and let's do a Y drive mapping, and let's click Browse, and. <clears throat> Now that we've got, uh, I've got Discovery turned on in Windows 10, you'll need to make sure that Discovery is turned on um, or this will not work. A few seconds from now, the uh, network location should come up for Open Media Vault so I can map a network drive Y to it. And what you saw earlier was when I had previously mapped it to drive Z and I it's no longer mapped to, to Z, and so that's okay. All right, so here we are, Open Media Vault, and let's uh, select it. We've got the public uh, share that we have here, and so let's click OK. And so now we should have Open Media Vault public share mapped to drive Y on the Windows 10 platform. Click Finish. All right, and here it is, okay? So I've got the Y drive now set up. Uh, and there's something on it already. Um, but this is the network attached storage uh, connected to USB 3.0 uh, that I have running in a virtual machine uh, with Open Media Vault uh, installed in Debian Linux in a VM. Okay. And so now if I want to uh, come up and um, let's change that to, um, let's take a folder here. It's got something in it. And let me minimize that. Let me come over and show you that I can just drag and drop this over to our network attached storage and do a copy. And it will copy that right onto the network attached storage. And there it is. Okay, so it copied from there to there. And so we have effectively set up a network attached storage here of Open Media Vault. Okay, so I thought I'd go back into the application here and show you what we've got. We've got the general settings that you've already seen. And then uh, over here under system, there's a date time. And so I can actually set the date and the time zone. I can even use an, uh, a network time protocol server if I like. Uh, set up a manual setup here for date and time and then update the system. Uh, under network, I've got uh, the general, which is the host name of Open Media Vault, the domain name here of landlocal.asyscom.com. The interfaces here are ENP0S3, which is DHCP for IPv4, and IPv6 disabled. No proxy set up. I have not enabled that. For service discovery, um, I've got right now uh, FTP, NFS, RSync, SMB, CIFS, SSH, and the web control panel. And all of these are enabled. 
Uh, for firewall, I don't have anything set up there. I'm not going to mess with that at the moment. Uh, for notification here, um, I've got that disabled at the moment, but I could set up uh, a system here for SMTP, an internal mail server, if you will, to be notified when certain things happen on the system. And at some point, I probably will do that. Under power management here, um, I can schedule jobs that run, okay, using cron on Debian Linux. Uh, monitoring here, um, I've got it set for power button, nothing. Um, for monitoring here, I've got it enabled, and it's, it says it specifies whether the system performance statistics are collected periodically. Uh, for monitoring, I've got that uh, set up for that, uh, which is really nothing at the moment. For certificates, I can actually add an SSL certificate here, but it will be a self-signed certificate uh, unless I use uh, Let's Encrypt, and I may do that at some point, and, and that way it will be recognized as a secure rather than non-secure interface to the web browser. All right, for update management here, I can uh, check for updates, and I can go over to Settings, and I can uh, enable the pre-installed updates and community-maintained updates if I want to. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I've got plugins that I can select as well, and I'll be taking a look at these in the future. But here are the plugins that you have access to. Looks like there's quite a few of those uh, you can install, okay? And so take advantage of those. Under storage, you've got the disks, and when I showed this to you previously, you've got the two disks here. Um, and there are serial numbers and the types and the capacities. This is the one tera NAS attachment, and this is the 20 gig. Uh, VDI that the uh, Debian Linux uh, Open Media Vault is installed on. Can set up smart if you want to. Uh, in my particular case, uh, I may do that at some point so that it will alert me if I'm having a problem with that uh, network attached storage drive. You can even set up RAID management here uh, using Open Media uh, Vault, which is really nice. Uh, under file systems, I do have the network attached storage. Uh, formatted NTFS, and I wanted to do that specifically so I have permissions capability. Uh, but, the, of course, the uh, Debian Linux 20-gig uh, um, drive VDI is EXT4. Under services, uh, I've got FTP. Right now it is disabled, but at some point I will enable it. I have enabled it in the past and uh, allowed anonymous login. It worked really well. I may come back to that in a moment. NFS, Network File System, R-Sync, you, you have that capability. For the SMB CIFS, I do have that enabled, and the work group is work group for the Windows platform. Okay, Home directories I ra right now have disabled. I don't have that enabled. Wins capability I have disabled. And then advanced settings here, I've got none for the log level, et cetera, et cetera. For SSH, I've got that enabled on port 22. And I can SSH into the uh, VM. All right, I've already tested that. I won't do that in this video. Under Diagnostics, you've got the dashboard. Um, as I said, you've got SMB, CIFS, and SSH both uh, enabled. All right. And uh, for the dashboard here, um, you've got that capability to look at a lot of things here that uh, you normally wouldn't have. Under system information, here we've got uh, host name, version, processor, kernel, system time, uptime, 22 minutes, 20 seconds. Here's the load levels right now, the CPU usage and memory usage. I'm using only 6% of the 1.94 or the 2 gig uh, allocated RAM, which is really nice, very lightweight. Uh, processes here, this is running top in Debian Linux, but I'm looking at it through the web interface. All right. Uh, for performance statistics, and this is really nice, guys. Um, under CPU usage, you've got some graphs here. This is a CPU usage by hour, by day, uh, by week, and by month, and by year. Okay. For disk usage, I've got the disk usage by hour, by day, by week, and by month, and by year as well. For load averages, you can see what the load averages are doing by hour, by day, by week, by month, and by year as well. Memory usage, same here, hour, day, week, month, and year. 
And then the network interfaces, uh, looking at the traffic itself by hour, by day, by week, by month, and by year. Okay, so um, this is about all I wanted to show you. Uh, let's go back up and look at um, general settings here. I think that's all I want to show you right now. I'll do the FTP later in, a, in another video uh, because otherwise the video will be too long. So this has been... Open Media Vault, the Network Attached Storage Solution. Uh, Dan Calloway, Data Pioneer here on Linux Unix Tech Channel. If you like my video, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell to uh, get notified every time I do an upload. And so you have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.